As we talk to folks who are considering buying a house in Italy, a topic we never really discuss and we feel is often overlooked is... Heating. Heating. Keep me warm. Heating. <laughs> yeah. So today we're going to talk to you about the various heating options that are common in Italy, what we went with, and if we still feel that we made the right decision. We're Debbie and Stain, and this is our Italian destiny. You might be wondering, why heat? Why is it so important? Well, you have to know that in many countries around the Mediterranean, southern countries in Europe, we found that houses aren't super well insulated. So the heating expenses can be quite significant. Add to that that many of the homes that are attractive to foreign buyers are homes that have been restored, typical traditional old farmhouses. And those particularly uh, lack in the insulation. It may be beautiful to look up at the ceiling and see sort of the rafters and see the roof structure, but what that also means is that there isn't any insulation and obviously a lot of heat escapes that way throughout the year. We're going to walk you through the various options that people here use in our area and in, in Italy as a whole to heat the homes and the first one is wood. Now we're fortunate because we have a little bit of a forest around us which is part of our lot. Sorry. <laughs> and um, so we can harvest wood from our premises, but it's it's it involves a lot of work, right? It, you have to chop down the you have to chop down the tree, you have to cut the wood, etc. As it relates to wood, there's a few main benefits. The first benefit it's usually the cheapest option, especially for us. We have a little forest section around us that we that we own, so we can harvest wood from here. Uh, the second benefit is that it's very easy to come by even if you don't have the wood. So in our area, there's lots of suppliers of wood. They come to your house, it's pre-split, it's ready for, for your stove. Um, they cut it at the right length, etc. So it's cheap and it's easy to get. The downsides of wood are, first and foremost, it's generally not very efficient. Most fireplaces here are open, so a lot of the heat escapes through the chimney. We have a, we have a wood burner in our kitchen and it's really for atmosphere and to cook some steaks, but uh, it's not really a good, a good heat source. The second downside to wood is that you have to store it. We actually extended this little storage area and had this built because we needed some place where we could store our wood that was dry throughout the year. The third downside is that wood can be quite dirty, right? You have to, you have to clean it out constantly and also it's high maintenance. You have to constantly feed the fire with, with new logs. And when it's really cold or it's raining or just the weather's not great, it can be kind of a hassle to have to go outside and pick up your wood. The last downside to wood is one that we've come to realize more and more is that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to tie a wood fire to a central heating system. Here in Italy, generally, houses that have a central heating system will have radiators. There are a few houses that we've seen that have uh, underfloor heating, but generally speaking, radiators are how central heating works here in Italy. The second option that's out there is what's called pellets. These are essentially pressed wood particles that are sold in bags generally of 15 kilos, so that's like just over 30 pounds. And you could buy those at the grocery store or you can buy those at a hardware stores, etc. Um, so they're very easy to find. Uh, that brings me to the benefits. So first one, easy to find. Second one, Generally, these systems are connected to a radiator system, as is the case in our house. Uh, the third benefit is that it's lower maintenance than a wood stove. You can fill ours up and it will probably last about a day and a half. And as a result, you can sort of set it and forget it for that period. There are models as well uh, that hold many more bags and you could potentially fill it up and it provides heat for up to a week. But generally, those are much larger and those will therefore not be stored inside the house. So ours has sort of a, uh, an aesthetic uh, function as well as a heating function. The other types of heating systems will be purely practical and they will be just for heat. When we look at the downsides for uh, pellets is that the price has gone up quite a bit. While, where pellets were previously sort of a, the second cheapest option, um, now they're starting to become more expensive. So the, the downside is you have to have bags available to put in here. You can find these bags typically at the grocery store, but if you need a lot, like we did last year, we ordered a pallet twice, 
And so it was convenient, the pallet was delivered, but then we had 70 bags that we had to store somewhere. And this house is not great on storage, so we've decided moving forward that we will just buy bags as we go versus having to store a bunch of these pallets in a dry space. So it almost has to be in a covered um, indoor area. Another downside is that the installation or purchasing of the pellet stove could be quite expensive. So for us, we purchased this, this was sort of a end of series model, but we found out that the chimney that was in place needed to be improved. So between those two things, it ended up costing us quite a bit of money to get the system up and running. The last downside I would say is this, this stove, as I said, holds about a day and a half's worth of pellets. That means every other day or so, I have to come in here and vacuum and clean it out. There's like this dust ash that produ is produced and the container for that is not very large. So if you need a solution that provides heat continuously and you never turn off the heat at night, then this is not the greatest solution because you are forced to turn it off and let it cool down so that you can clean it out. So that's the last downside that I would say for a pellet system. Another very common way to heat a house is natural gas. Now we live a little bit in the middle of nowhere and so we don't have the city gas line here. And as a result, um, we have a tank. You can see it over here, uh, right here just outside the fenced area of our property, but still on our property, is an underground tank. And this tank, I'm not even sure how big it is, but was put in by the previous owners. It contains gas that is owned by the gas company and is connected to our house. This gas always provides hot water and always provides gas, natural gas for, for cooking. But if we want, we can also use this particular system to heat our radiators. The benefit of that is the same hot water heater type of system can be used for all three of those services. Well, I guess not the gas for cooking, but the hot water goes through that as well as the radiators. It's sort of an instant switch and it's probably Debbie's favorite way to heat because it's instantly you know, on and it works and it's thermostat controlled, it's very convenient. So the benefits of this is, like I said, it's the convenience. There's a very low upfront cost as well. The gas company here knows that you have to buy gas from them. So because they have a fixed contract, they basically pay for a lot of the excavation work and for the tank. That also means if you change suppliers, there may be a fee involved because they have to come and take it out. Now, they also put up this sort of unsightly fence, um, but generally speaking, that is no longer the case right now. We have a friend who's getting one of these installed uh, next week, actually, and his will no longer require defense around it for safety. Um, other benefits are that you will never run out. The, the gas company always makes sure that there's gas in here. Um, so it's really a, a hassle-free sort of uh, solution. Sorry, there's a lot of flies this time of year. As far as downsides with regards to gas, gas is the most expensive um, way to heat your house in almost all cases. Um, so for us, we used it only briefly because we had been warned by locals that it's super expensive. So we were very cautious in the beginning and it didn't cost us too much last year before we had the stufa installed to heat our house, but it, it, could, it could get up there pretty pricey. Um, the next thing that's a downside is you have to have a space that's dedicated to this. You cannot have trees around it. So it's sort of takes up a little space in your yard that perhaps you could have used for other things. Um, some people may consider it to be dangerous. Um, there's a lot of safety measures here, so I don't, I don't feel that way particularly. The last downside is you don't really know what the pricing is gonna be. We've all seen the news lately where the gas prices are going up and down, mostly up, and um, that makes this sort of heat a little unpredictable. You can't really pre-purchase your gas uh, there is a fixed price, but it's for a term that isn't very long. I believe it was one year for us. So come in here in October, it will come up for renewal, and I'm sure the price will double, if not more than double. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's a bit more risky. Let's move on to the next option, the last one, and then we'll kind of get into the system that we have, why we chose it, and if we would still choose it if we had to make a decision today. Now, my favorite option is electric. We have three of these units right here in the house. This one here downstairs, and we have two upstairs, one in each bedroom. And the joy of that is I just have to take the remote 
and click, and it starts to heat. I love this idea, but I'm going to have Stan explain to you uh, it's different reasons why it's good and why it's not. Alrighty, so here I am with some facts. <laughs> <laughs> so the one, the main reasons that we like this option is it enables you to heat or cool, because these are dual purpose units, one room as opposed to your whole house. If, if you have a larger house or a part of your house that doesn't require any heat, then you can choose to only heat the spaces where one of these is hanging or you can do it 30 minutes before you go to bed if you like to have a warm be bedroom um, or a cool bedroom in the summer, I guess. Uh, the second benefit is that these are pretty affordable. We were at the store the other day, it's kind of like a Home Depot over here, and they had units uh, like this one, this size or so, uh, and to purchase the hardware, which means the external unit as well as this thing, was less than 400 euros. So. Obviously, you have to add some installation to that, but it's really very affordable to put one of these up. Some of the downsides is that this is still pretty expensive. If you were to heat your house with just this kind of heat, it would be quite expensive. The second up downside is that it's not the most beautiful thing to look at, especially when you have a traditional home um, and it's got all the, the sort of period features in it. Having one of these units may not be what you want. Um, and the third downside is that if you start putting in these all over, it's not just internal that it's sort of ugly. You've got all these external units as well. Now, you can consolidate the internal units with, with one external unit, but that means you have a sort of single point of failure. So when we asked our um, expert about this, he was like, I would not advise you to do one system for the whole house for these, even if it's for separate rooms, because if the system goes down, none of them will work. So. That's our last option. Um, this one, like I said, is expensive. The caveat, of course, is always that if you have solar system that provides the electricity for free, quote unquote, then you can use this um, without having to, to deal with the high cost. Now we'll move on to our own system, what we use primarily for heat, why we went with it, and if you would still make the same decision today. Ultimately, from talking to people that were in the area, as well as the previous owners, we pretty quickly decided that gas was not going to be our primary form of heat. We were thoroughly warned about the pricing, and so we quickly kept that as sort of our backup solution. We renewed a contract with the provider of the gas, so we'd have that, but we didn't want to go with that as our number one thing. So we, we looked into getting and purchasing the Stufa, here, here they call it a stufa, the pellet stove, if you will, to um, hook up to the current um, mechanisms that we had to heat our radiators, correct? Yes. Yeah. The previous owners had a pellet stove as well, which is the stufa that, that Debbie's referring to. So it only made sense for us to at least pursue that possibility. We went to a local store right here in town and one couple towns over and kind of looked at the various options. and. When we came across this one, it, Debbie was very pleased because it was beautiful and I was pleased with the, the price that was discounted because it was an end of series model. Um, this is a large enough unit that can handle the amount of radiators that we have, the number of radiators that we have uh, tied to it. Which is how many? We have one, <clears throat> two, three, four. Four downstairs. Four downstairs. No, five downstairs, one in the bathroom as well. Ah, we have one, bathroom. two, three, four more upstairs. Okay. So we have a total of nine or ten radiators okay. uh, tied to this. And a lot of these stufas are rated for a certain kilowatt or for certain square meters. And this one met kind of our square meter space. Which now, is what? How many square meters do we have? 150, 160, I think. Okay. I always okay. thought 170, but I think it's actually 150, 160. So. Okay. Um, another thing we like about this Tufa is that, or about the system that we have, is that we have a switch, a thermostat, that enables us to choose whether or not the upstairs heaters come on. The radiators upstairs, we can sort of block them off. Of course, each radiator has its own little gauge, but from, as a whole system upstairs, we can just shut it off, and then we can use those uh, electric units for the individual rooms if that's 
where we need some additional heat. Yeah. Now, last summer we spent about two, we we ran through about two and a half pallets of pellets, which at the time was about five euros per bag. So we went through about 170 bags. So it's certainly not cheap. We probably spent about 900 or a thousand euros. And I'm thinking this year the pellets have gone up quite significantly that we may end up spending about 13 to 1500 euros for heat. Um, it's, it's pricey, yes, but ultimately it's a lot cheaper still than if we were to use gas. And the convenience that we don't have to have a bunch of wood storage uh, is another benefit. We, we do have a wood fireplace in the kitchen that we can use for cooking or we can use for atmosphere. Yeah. There is an option to put what's called a cassette in there. It's an insert, I think, in America typically. And that really ups the efficiency. Um, we are contemplating doing that because there is no radiator in the kitchen and it can be a little bit chilly in there. Yeah. But, uh, but that's sort of one thing we're thinking about for the future. So in conclusion, would we do it again? We would likely pick a pellet stove again, yes. Um, I'm not sure that I was completely aware of the installation costs. We had to redo piping all the way to the chimney, through the chimney, which costs quite a bit extra. So it's certainly not that much cheaper than having gas, for example, but there is still a, a difference. And um, with us having all the different options available here, we can, we can sort of play it by ear and say, okay, well, today we do want a little bit of heat, we could just turn on the heater in the living room while we're watching TV and then maybe in the bedroom. Um, it all depends kind of what the temperatures are like. And, and, and I think if we had a blower on this, oh yeah. it would be really nice. Yeah, that's probably a mistake that we made. This model, although beautiful and on sale, it doesn't have a blower. So we've tried to kind of work our way through that by having an, a ceiling fan installed here, which distributes a little bit of the heat. Yeah. But we're still thinking of ways to help distribute the heat that's coming from the unit itself a little bit more in this area because this is a great spot to read a book or a magazine or whatever you want to do. Well, if you like this video mm -hmm. and you found some uh, good information here, give us a like down below. Hit that like button. That really helps our channel a lot. And um, subscribe. Yep, why not? We've seen a lot of new subscribers in recent months. I believe there's a, a lot of interest in people uh, trying to move to Italy. so. Let us know what other topics you want us to talk about and we'll put them in one of our future videos. Yeah, so thanks for joining us and we'll chat with you later. Ciao! Ciao.